Thank you very much, um, each of you. And um, the second is the two-part question. It's the controversial question of the day. Um, do you feel that your specific ethnocultural community is adequately and accurately represented in mainstream Canadian media? So that includes both television, radio, and print. And uh, yes, and then if so, because I, I don't want to say simple no. Um, if it's a no or if it's a yes, please elaborate. Thank you. Anyone can start, but someone has to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will take the lead. Um, well, my answer to the question is that to some extent, to some extent media is representing accurately. Uh, and it really depends on where you live. In Canada, we are so lucky and we are so unfortunate. Uh, sorry, so fortunate, sorry. We are so fortunate because we have so many legal documents and legal enforcement that, in, that empower us as Canadians to lots of um, equality and um, um, uh, maybe enforcement uh, to anti-discrimination activity. For example, we have the Multiculturalism Act, our famous and wonderful Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom and so on. Um, but the problem is, the media is particularly uh, involved in the business of representation. This is a function of the media. The media should be representing the question it would be, is it an accurate representation? Yes or no? Uh, windows, as I always say, uh, sorry, uh, media, as I always say, is the windows of our world. It represents the world's box. We cannot go physically to meet people with different cultures and different uh, religion and different language and so on. We depend on the media to represent that to us. Um, to answer the question, and since I am from uh, uh, an Arab uh, culture, I would say after September 11, it has been a lot of stereotyping and misrepresentation in the media generally for uh, Muslims and people coming from the Middle East, uh, aka terrorists. Um, you know, media is uh, sometimes reinforcing this kind of stereotypical images by propagating the same kind of you know, stereotype as, uh, and, uh, of, of, uh, of a person coming from this place, living um, in that, you know, culture, wearing this type of clothes, talking this, um, this language, and so on, as uh, of a negative uh, kind of attribute, which is uh, not supposed to be. Uh, in media, and we have lots of historical accounts on that, particularly if you look at uh, kids' movie, the famous Aladdin, uh, The Arabian Night, uh, where is the lyric? It says it's barbaric, but hey, it's home. And uh, images of a snake and uh, belly dancing and uh, uh, all of these kind of images, it's, it's so orientalist. They are just throwing lots of imaginative uh, attribute to what it be, to be uh, somewhat coming from this culture, from this uh, community. So this is where it is crucial. This is where the line should be drawn, where education and uh, lots of informative kind of media programming and media um, material should be, and this should be from the very, very uh, childhood, from Disney, from kids watching TV, they should be able to recognize differences Aboriginal people should be on mainstream media, so people, so kids when they are watching, you know, their favorite show and so on, they would be able to recognize, yes, this person is different, but we are living in the same place. We have to acknowledge uh, the differences and respect it. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm within the time limit. Yeah, okay. So I'll just post. It. Funny thing that you said about Disney. Apparently. There was a trivia question that I was asked the other day. Who was the last uh, Caucasian Disney princess? Uh, Who was it? Belle. Belle. And that was like eons ago. That was a long time ago, right? So, you know, we have a lot of princesses of, uh, of color, uh, but yet they're still being orientalized or uh, dancing voodoo in New Orleans, whatever it may be. <laughs> Uh, so, so 
you know, and we can apply that to media, we can apply that to news media, right? Um, we can put faces up there, but what does representation actually mean? What are we talking about when we talk about representation? I don't think that we should be just talking about the aesthetic, uh, but also a rudimentary, um, uh, fun fundamental uh, determination to actually do it properly. So proper news uh, represents, uh, not news should uh, represent, in, in my view. Um, last week there was three events that happened that were uh, incredibly horrific. Um, one uh, uh, was spoke about by, uh, from Kate, uh, what happened in Norway. Um, second, uh, the death of uh, pop star Amy Winehouse. And, uh, and third, the famine in Somalia. Um, and all these were happening around the same time. And if you, uh, you know, read, uh, if you were reading the papers or watching news television at around the same time, there was specific attention given to uh, two of those uh, events um, rather than uh, another. Um, and, and I guess you can guess which one wasn't, uh, wasn't focused on as much, uh, the Somalia famine, just in case. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we see the journalists on television um, and they're almost in tears when they're talking about Amy. They're almost in, in horrific shock uh, when they're talking about uh, the incidents in Norway. Uh, but when we talk about the famine, it's, it's done in a very, you know, academic... The UN said today uh, there's a famine in Somalia, you know, there's been a famine in Somalia. Like, this stuff been happening in Somalia, and there's a lot more people that are being affected. However, our attention to it. So does that change if they put a short black guy up there saying it? No, it's the attention, it's the type of attention that we give to it, and how we, uh, how we take a look at these stories. You know, I, I, I got a lot of chops in, uh, in Calgary, we were just talking about doing journalism in Calgary, and, uh, and Christmas time, I was giving crazy stories, you know, like uh, people are uh, people are spending more in Calgary this year, uh, despite a recession. Uh, the animals at the zoo um, are hurting their ears because of the fireworks that are happening uh, at New Year's Eve. And then, uh, and then one day uh, in the newsroom, I'm like, "Yo, it's Eve," and they're like, "Eve, what is what is Eve?" So you know, Eve is the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, um, it is a, a big Muslim holiday, the big one. Um, <laughs> there are actually two. There happen, it, happens, it happens twice a year, and so uh, and so you know I'm, I'm looking to do a story uh, based on, on on this holiday, but you know not not attention, no attention was given to it, um, and so you know I don't necessarily think it's a it's a matter of who is uh, doing the work, but actually what the work is and what, what we're actually talking about. Okay, I'll, I'll take a slightly different um, a twist on that, I suppose. Um, I'm, I'm South Asian, but there are many types of different South Asians. I'm, I'm not even quite sure how to identify myself. I'm an Indo-Canadian ethnic Sikh, I could say. Um, and anyways, so from that ethnocultural aspect, um, I would say that Indo-Canadians actually have done very well um, in the media, especially in the last, like I would say, five to, to ten years. You see them as, you know, uh, anchors, you see them as reporters, um, and like Ian Hanneman saying, his heritage would be Indian as well. Um, they've gone into the media world quite well. Russell Peters, Sean Majumder, in terms of like, um, uh, folks who are um, on CBC radio or are traveling across and entertaining as well too. So I think that's actually um, how things are moving as we move into first and second generation um, immigrants because they're challenging the norms, I think, of what their culture has naturally accepted as sort of careers that are acceptable as well too, um, from a culture that I come from anyways, uh, where we're known to be sort of doctors, lawyers, engineers, or mathematicians. Um, and and the, so, but on the other hand, I guess, where, where I get concerned would be that, that, well, first of all, mainstream media. What is mainstream media? Uh, because the reality is that what I think the latest stats say something like 21 to 50 percent of urban centers in Canada are visible minorities. So guess what? Mainstream media is, is, is as Kate was saying, what's the new mainstream media? Um, so I think that where I get challenged is that in whatever we want to call mainstream media, um, 
we don't have a realistic portrayal of how our people in our communities interact with each other. Um, you know, and, and I know that some people are using the word inter, um, intercultural instead of multicultural now. And the reality is that there's shifts happening in our communities where you know there are successful um, interracial marriages. There's um, you know, or my son whose best friend is Chinese, and another one is a Kenyan who has Indo-Canadian heritage, um, or another one who's a fourth-generation British. Um, you know, immigrant, they're all immigrants, but the reality is that there's interconnections and interrelations that we don't see in mainstream media. And that is, and, and I think that's somehow going to delay or harm, perhaps, um, sort of the democratic process in our, in our society, um, how our kids see each other and how they end up seeing um, their relations develop. And I think that that could be harmful. Um, so, so that's where there, there's some strides, but I don't see the strides moving fast enough, I suppose. Um, I would have to agree that uh, there definitely have been strides uh, made in the media in terms of representing um, different ethnocultural uh, communities, but certainly uh, not to the point of, um, of if we're talking uh, equal or equality. Um, I guess I interpreted the question um, you know, whether my ethnocultural community is adequately represented in the media, as in, uh, let's take TV, because that's, that's the medium that I work in. Um, is my ethnocultural community represented in the media, in the television media? I would say no. Um, I, I was looking up, I was trying to look up statistics today. I didn't find any for, for Chinese. Chinese is my background, but if, if you would consider, and I think uh, you just brought up the, the statistic, like if, uh, for example, half of Toronto's population, um, you know, was born outside of Canada. Um, I don't think that half of uh, the people delivering the news, let's say in Toronto, were born outside of, uh, of Canada. So, so that's, that's one problem, that's one disconnect there. That, that's maybe why um, Somalia is not, not as, as much on the radar as, as something like uh, Amy Winehouse, for example, because uh, I think that you know, living in North America, we're, there's so much pop culture. It's it's thrown at us. Uh, if you take the example of uh, of uh, Will and Kate's royal tour, yes, it was a significant tour, but there was wall to wall to wall coverage when when, for example, people people are starving, people are dying in in another part of the world. So I think that that plays a role in that disconnect. Um, I, I certainly think that, um, you know, okay, if we take that example of, of, you know, half of Toronto's population being born outside of Canada, perhaps it's not realistic, let's say, to have, um, you know, that percentage of, uh, you know, of journalists working in the local media, fine, but at least the roots of, you know, those cultural communities need to be represented. I mean, they're the ones, you know, as a journalist, you're, you're the one pitching ideas, you're the one driving or helping to drive uh, the daily um, what you see on TV at the end of the day and without those people to pitch those ideas it, it, it gets lost.